what a dream of a sister dying means. The death of a sister can be a traumatic dream image indeed. Usually when people wake up from this type of dream, they immediately check up on their sister, whether she's a younger or older sibling. They're still alive. That's their natural instinct. The good news is that when you see your sister dying in your dreams, she's still likely to be alive. These types of emotionally traumatizing dreams are almost always never prophetic. But just because you get that instant relief of knowing your loved one is still alive doesn't make this dream any less min meaningful. Remember, your subconscious sees all and understands pretty much everything. That's why it uses a very strong emotional and graphic image for a reason. It's trying to point you to something worthy of your attention. In the case of many people, they see their sister dying in their dreams because their subconscious is telling them uncomfortable truths they would rather overlook. Alternatively, they may, be, they may be living such busy lives with all their duties, responsibilities, and obligations that they're pretty much just spending all their waking hours putting out one fire after another. Whatever the case may be in your life, when you see your sister dying in your dreams, you have to sit up and pay attention. Your subconscious is shining a spotlight on a series of important issues in your life that may be driving you to a certain outcome that you're not all that happy with. Unfortunately, when people have reached this stage, they're the last to know. They have all these things going on in their career, business, life, school, and relationships that they're the last to know when things finally come to a head. Interestingly enough, when you stop and ask the people around you, most of them would tell you, I saw you were, I saw what's going to happen a mile away. I'm shocked that you did not see it coming. Now, at this stage, a lot of people would feel betrayed and asked, if you saw that this was going to happen, why didn't you tell me? That's a natural reaction. But let's be fair. A lot of the time, the reasons why people don't pull us aside is either we don't trust them, or even if we do trust them, we won't listen to them. I know it's hard to digest, but nine times out of 10, when you find yourself in this type of situation, it's on you, not your parents, not your loved ones, not your friends, coworkers, or anybody else. It's on you. You have laid the foundation to find yourself in the situation and you have to deal with it. There is no space for denial or convenient fantasies that you may have about the kind of person you wish to be and the kind of life you wish you're living. Your subconscious is showing you the image of your sister dying. In many cases, she's dying from a painful death, and this wakes you up. The general meaning of a sister dying in your dreams. As the old saying goes, the ones who are closest to us are the ones who can hurt us the most. If you think about it, this makes all the sense in the world because you let your guard down when you allow others to get close to you. Not only are they more likely to hurt you with their words because you trust them at a deep level, but it also goes the other way. You, can, you feel that with such closeness and comfort at such a deep level, you can just let it loose. This is why stray words can take a life of their own and cause more damage than they need to. You think you can just let your words loose because in the back of your head you're thinking, they know me so well, they would understand. They would take it in the best way possible. Don't be so sure. People can and do, th do take things too far when they are dealing with people who are really close to them. That's how volatile things can get. This is the type of emotional arrangement you're engaged with, you're engaged in. Typically, such, despite such risks, when it's things so bad that people go the other way, people still choose to get close to people. Why? Because it feels really good. You feel like you belong. You feel like you're accepted. You feel like you are somewhere in this world where you don't have to explain yourself or someone uh, will try to push you out. You don't feel that you have to live up to somebody else's expectations. Instead, you can just be yourself because you belong. This is where you need to be. The price you pay, of course, is heightened sensitivity. Can you trust people? When you see the death of your sister in your nighttime vision, your subconscious is drawing your attention to issues of trust. Your attention is being led to things that you think you know about yourself and the security and confidence that flows from such assumed knowledge. When you see this distressing image, it's almost, it almost always means that you are trying to avoid, ignore, overlook, or rather not deal with certain issues in your life. Your subconscious is slapping you around and pulling you up by the hair and looking at you straight in the eye and telling you, look at me, look at this, this is important. And if you still refuse to look, it takes things to the next level and, and tells you, in so many ways, I can hurt you. Of course, this is not another person talking. It's you. This is your inner reality. 
coping with loss. We lose people all the time. But believe it or not, I'm not just talking about physical death. Death, after all, is a part of life, and people that we trust and who we feel we're connected to on a deep level do pass away. But the most common form of loss has little to do with death. Instead, people change. This is no less emotionally profound and distressing than learning about the death or demise of somebody you care about. How do you deal with change? When people change, that person, for all intents and purposes, is gone. They've turned a new leaf. They've gone a new direction. Perhaps you've seen a new layer of them. At that point, you're going to have to accept this fact and make space for this new person in your life. They've gone on to a new aspect or a new side of their existence on this planet. Sadly, some people refuse to do this. Instead, they put up a fight. They're basically saying to themselves, I refuse to let this person change, so I'm going to hang on to who I think they should be or who I remember them to be in the past. If you're in an intimate relationship with that person, you know what you're doing is wrong. You're not loving them for who they are. You're not giving them proper respect. After all, they are their own person, and you have to respect that change. And this is why seeing the death of your sister in your dream can involve your ability to cope with a day-to-day -day loss brought about by changes in other people. Maybe their personality changed because they went through something traumatic like a divorce or a long-term job loss. Maybe they got sick or they went through some sort of physical change. Whatever the case may be, change has entered your relationship and this person has turned the corner. The, their old self is gone for whatever reason. The question that you have to answer is, how are you going to de deal with all of this? A dying sister can indicate a yearning for the past. Another common interpretation of the subconscious image of a dying female sibling involves your relationship with yearning. In other words, your subconscious is telling you about your sense of nostalgia. Now, a lot of people assume that nostalgia or a yearning for the good old times is a good thing. The subtext being the past has always been better than the present. This is a common dream interpretation theme. It's actually fairly simple to resolve a typical nostalgia dream because anybody with any kind of maturity knows that the past is gone. It's never coming back. And the things that you think are so much better in the old days are just mental and emotional illusions. You're just reading into the past a lot of your present discomfort, anxieties, and frustrations. The reality is the best that life has to offer is yet to come. But there's something else going on here which is actually more important. This is slightly different from the dream interpretation immediately above. A dying sister can indicate a longing for the future. The deeper issue involves a specific type of nostalgia where you feel that you really can't enjoy the present moment. In the back of your mind, your happiness is always situated five months, five years, or even 15 years down the road. Does this sound familiar? It should, because a lot of Americans live their life this way. When you were in grade school, what did you think about where your future will be? You would think that what you will be much happier once you get to middle school, because there's different things there. You will be doing different things. You expect to have different friends and try all sorts of extracurricular activities. You look forward to junior high school. Well, guess what? When junior high school rolls around, you're not any happier. Because by that point, you're thinking about the things that you will be doing in high school. You'll be thinking about the person you would become when you reach high school. Maybe you would make it to the junior prom. Maybe you would be active in varsity sports. Whatever the case may be, you end up robbing yourself of your present happiness in junior high school because you're looking at your life few years down the road. Guess what happens? This ha happens all the time because by the time you get to the middle of senior high school, you're still not happy. Because now you're focused on college, and after college, you're focused on your first real job. And once you're in your real job, you're focused on what happens next. Maybe it's graduate school, maybe it's settling down. I hope you can see the pattern. It goes on and on until people are ready to be lowered six feet into the ground or have their bodies turned into ash. It kind of makes you wonder, what is happiness in the first place? What is happiness? You can't kick the can down the road when it comes to your personal fulfillment and happiness. Happiness is one of those life realities that you have to appreciate, savor, capture, and realize in the here and now. Happiness is not a product of your circumstances, believe it or not. Instead, it's something that you actively will into existence because there is no such thing as a perfect reality. 
You cannot allow yourself that delusion. Otherwise, you're going to suck out all the happiness and joy out of your life. There will always be something that is off or needs improvement. That's just life. Frustration is baked into the human condition if you're not already aware of this reality. When you see a dead sister or a female sibling, your subconscious is telling you that this aspect of nostalgia is very much real in your waking life, and it's making you miserable. Let me be clear. Your happiness cannot be found in the future. The worst feeling. The worst thing that can happen is when you think about the past and ask yourself, what was I doing when that song came out? What was I feeling when these things were happening in my life? It's as if I was locked away, focused on something else, and all these amazing things were happening in my life, and I wasn't there to fully take it in. But you were there. You just, those, you just chose to focus on something beyond your control, things that are supposed to happen five to ten years later. Give yourself permission to be present fully, right here, right now. Stop deluding yourself with these visions of a perfect future or a perfect self, because let's face it, perfection will never come. Dreams of sister dying can indicate issues with your relationships. It's tempting to come up with some sort of one-to-one -one correlation between the status of your relationships with your family members and your dream of a sister dying. You should understand that your relationship has many different levels. Just as you wear many different masks depending on where you are as well as what time you're doing something, your relationships only have value when you allow people to get sufficiently close to you. And believe me, the traumatic image of a sister dying or a sister going through some soul-crushing process of sickness, weakness, fading, and even death is enough for their consciousness to be awakened to the importance of deeper issues of life and death. Truly, death is one of the few constants in life. Taxes are also part of the mix. And when you see this image, your dream interpretation has to focus on how you define intimacy. Is it enough to know that person is your sister, that you meet them on Thanksgiving and you exchange gifts with each other? And from time to time you call each other? Is that enough? Or is it enough to know certain things about that person? Things that they shared with you in confidence. Things that they trust you not to tell anybody else. Are you laboring under some sort of assumption that just because your parents defined intimacy within your family a certain way, that you have to automatically follow their definition? Does it feel heavy? Does it feel like some sort of obligation? Are you really sparking the intimate bonds between your family members out of genuine love and concern for them? Or do you feel that you're basically just living out a script that was handed down to you by forces and people you really can't control and fully know? By extension, are you living out your life based on some other people's expectations or your addiction to their validation? Do you base your sense of self-acceptance on how well you're able to act on that script? handed to you that you can't control. There is no right or wrong answer to these questions. You're the only person that can truly answer them correctly because, ultimately, all of these have to make sense to you. After all, it's your life. Maybe your subconscious is showing you that image of your dying sister to wake you up to what you've really been doing all this time. Ultimately, this has little to do with your sister and has everything to do with how you're living your life right here, right now. Maybe you're robbing yourself of all the possibilities of real life and all its adventure, value, and joy. As you get one step closer to death which each, with each breath you take, is your life really living up to what life truly has to offer you? You have to remember that every single day we get closer and closer to our death. I know it's depressing, but it's also true. Death cannot be cheated. Death cannot be intimidated. Death is a reality. It's kind of like that massive Stonehenge image that first starts out way in the distance. It's nice and small and you can afford the luxury of looking at the rest of the scenery around it because it's so far away. At that point, death seems more like a concept or a construct, uh, something that you could see than, than something that you can actually see, hear, touch, taste, and smell. But with each morning you wake up and each breath you take, the idea of death creeps closer and closer. It's not necessarily something that you have to fear. It's not necessarily something that you have to avoid at all costs. Instead, you have to make peace with its reality. You have to understand that at this point, you can enjoy whatever you life you have left, and the clock is ticking. It could mean that a lot of our day-to-day -day interpretation of our lives and how we manage our waking life end up cheating us out of what truly matters in this world. Not surprisingly, a dying sister is a powerful dream symbol. Make use of this reality. 
take advantage of the emotional urgency you feel when there's a chance that you would be losing somebody that truly matters to you. A dying sister can mean a sense of disconnection. When you see your female sibling dying in your mind's eye and you can't quite picture yourself in the same room, breathing the same air or feeling the same range of emotion, this disembodied sensation could lead to a dream interpretation that is more disconnected, but nonetheless real. Maybe there are certain areas in your life that you feel disconnected to. You can't quite slip into them. I'm not talking about your relationships per se. I'm talking about your roles, responsibilities, and duties. People who just became parents can identify with this easily. People who just got promoted in key roles in companies may be familiar with this. Whatever the case may be, when you're going through some sort of transition that is so abrupt or so big as to profoundly impact your consciousness, you feel that your life may have gone to the next level, but it hasn't sunk in emotionally yet. It's tempting to think that you just have to give it enough time and your subconscious would take it all in and everything will fall into place. You expect something to mature inside of yourself enough so that you will be able to handle everything that takes place in the new world that you've entered. But it turns out that these feelings are simply wishful thinking. It turns out that when you get your new self ready for the new realities you're going to deal with and the fears that come with them, you have to be more proactive. The death image of somebody close to you, but presented in a fairly detached or cerebral way, may be your subconscious way of urging you to be more proactive and take control of the transitions already happening in your life. The death of a close sibling can represent change. The powerful sign of a dying sister can be intended by your subconscious to push you to be more proactive. At the very least, you are encouraged to roll up your sleeves emotionally speaking and pick and choose or mix and match the emotional signals and symbols that you choose to navigate this new reality with. I know this sounds like some high-level words here, but it really all boils down to emotional responsibility. And responsibility comes with living in a new reality now. Not tomorrow, not the next week, not, the ne not next year, now. Maybe it's parenthood. Maybe you got promoted. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you just entered school. Whatever the case may be, you are in a new position in your life, whether you choose to be aware of it or not. You're moving around in a new world, and you cannot do that with your old self. Your old self has to, at some point, change or even die to give way to the new self that is adapted and molded and shaped by your new reality. This, this brings me to the next logical dream interpretation of the dead sister image. You're experiencing profound spiritual confusion. I know it's not a very popular thing to say in our materialist world, but I'm going to say it anyway. Everything that people can perceive about you has to start somewhere. Everything that is objectively true about you and all the facts that make up who you are or who you think you are all flow from a, def a definite place. And this place is spiritual. Now, this is where things get a little messy. Your spiritual reality is not this deep, unexplained, shadowy world trapped within you that can only be explored, sliced and diced, and mixed and matched, and somehow made sense by some spiritual medium. There is no space for magic here. Instead, you are the product of your choices. You may be thinking to yourself, there's really nothing I can do about my reality. It's as if I was born with this world and I just woke up with it in my lap. It's like I'm this dreamer and that woke up and have to live the life handed to me. Well, that's a negative and ultimately counterproductive way of looking at things because the truth is your world is what you make of it. Everything that exists outside of you is a reflection of what you used to hang on inside of you. You are more in control than you give yourself credit for. A lot of the time, the reason why we feel we are trapped in this world that we cannot control, shape, or somehow direct is because we chose to remain children. Again, it's not a very popular thing to say, but this is the reality. There's this inner child in you that's stuck. It chooses to believe that it is not in control. That inner child refuses to take responsibility. Deep down, you think your choices don't really have much of an impact on your world. Everything else is a product of luck or circumstance. Maybe it's an accident of birth where you were born in, uh, born, where you were born and who your parents are. But these are just lies. These are like temporary smoke that fades away when you look at the reality of your life. Whether negative things may be happening in your life and whether it may be out in public or hidden in the corners based on what you choose to see and based on the fears that you may be running away from, the truth is your life is exactly the way it's supposed to be based on your choices. 
I get it. Most people would say, well, I, I wouldn't choose to be miserable. I wouldn't choose to be frustrated. I wouldn't choose to feel like I've made certain mistakes in my life and it has doomed me to this reality. I want to be happy. I want to live life to the fullest. But the truth is, you chose to be here. You know where you want to go. But here you are, stuck. It's not because there are chains on your wrists. Instead, you chose to stay there. Whatever symbolic realities you choose to believe in, this overarching motif symbolizes a deep inner truth about you. All these are reflections of your choices because you choose to believe in certain things instead of others. What you choose to believe in will determine where your hope is going to come from, and that's why it's all spiritual. Here's the good news. You have a lot more control over this inner reality than you give yourself credit for. This inner world is not a space full of demons and phantasms with angry gods and demonic fortresses. No, this inner spiritual world boils down to what priorities are and how they affect your emotional states to the point that you tend to make decisions habitually. Priorities, values, mindset, ways of looking at reality. If you change what you choose to draw your hope from, for example, you start doing things differently. Sure, the same challenges can appear on a day-to-day -day basis, but what you do now can be very different from what you chose to do in the past. Believe it or not, your past doesn't have to define you, nor does your past have to chain you to a certain path. Life is not on autopilot. You have a lot more to say over your day-to-day -day reality than you give yourself credit for. It all begins with taking control of your decisions. This is very hard to take because we'd like to imagine ourselves as emotional vessels that are just trapped in this subconscious combination of factors that we really have no way of explaining or controlling. Thankfully, all of that is just a lie. In fact, I'll go one step further and say that it's just plain laziness. Since everything that exists in your life has to come from your decisions, choices, patterns, all of these can be changed. All of these are just reflections of your spiritual state and your willingness to master your spirit. Dreaming of the absence of your sister. When you are emotional and you worry that there's something negative you may think will happen in the future, this can indicate a sense of separation or alienation. You feel that you are somehow separated emotionally from your mother, your sister, your siblings, or your father. At the same time, the conscious part of yourself might be thinking that you're in the right. Maybe they said something wrong or they did something wrong to you when you were a child. It doesn't really matter because you're in a cold and distant place. You feel disconnected. You feel that you're not getting the warmth, acceptance, and belonging that you usually expect from your family. But in reality, this is just the surface because your relationship with your family is a reflection of your relationship with who you really are. Remember, only you can shape your relationship with others. You, have to reje you can reject or accept. That's how powerful you are. You also need to remember that you can only give what you have. And it's hard to love your family if you first don't love yourself enough. It's hard to have respect for your mother, whether dead or still living, if you do not respect yourself and love yourself first. So when you see the image of your dead sister or dying female sibling, this can be a reflection or your, or of your subconscious yearning for closeness internally. In other words, there may be a big gaping hole in your soul. You're not living up to what you could be. Your feelings don't line up with who you imagine yourself to be. None of this is symbolic. These are very real because your subconscious is telling you that you're not living a life of integrity. And you probably already know how this works because you can find yourself losing friends, losing your grip on who you think you are, and losing your inner consistency. So don't be surprised if people see that you're saying one thing and doing another. The common word for this, of course, is hypocrisy. But it all plays out on a deeper level. The hidden aspect of this is that you do certain things, but you're actually feeling another range of emotions. It's as if you're walking around day to day with a giant smile on your face. But deep down inside, you're hollow, numb, or even flat out frowning or crying. There's no integrity. How come? Your inner world no longer lines up with your external signals. What does it mean to see a dead sister in a coffin? The coffin is a very powerful dream symbol. 
any dream interpretation of the coffin must focus on the fact that it's a vehicle that takes you from one plane of existence to the next. After all, people put your body in a coffin when it's time to be buried. People fear this imagery because they know what's next. They know that the coffin in this context will represent forgetting. Most people don't want to be forgotten. In fact, most people fear being forgotten because being trapped in oblivion seems to be a faith worse than death. But death and oblivion go hand in hand. Think of the last time you went to a relative's funeral. You may have loved Aunt Helen to bits. She may have been everything to you. But that's 20 years ago. How do you feel about her now? And when you pass, how do you think people will feel about her gravestone a hundred years from now? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That's the way of life. There's always forgetfulness. It's always hanging over us. That's why it doesn't make sense to fear it. The key here is to be at peace with the fact that everything will fade. Everything will melt away. As the old REM song goes, it's the end of the world and I feel fine. We're all going to die. In fact, if I were to remain alive, a lot of our old selves had to die. So don't freak out when you see your dead sister in a coffin. It points to an everyday reality that you just have to get a handle on, which is the immediacy and the urgency of change and having the proper attitude to live with change. Dreaming of your little sister dying. When you see your little sister, whether an actual sister or an imagined one in your nighttime vision, in the process of dying, your subconscious is telling you that something you prize or wish to protect is at issue. And oftentimes this image is a reflection of what your subconscious is really trying to say, that the part of you that wants to be a guide or a protector or somehow um, want to get special treatment has a rough road ahead. It can also be a projection where your need to guide somebody else or uh, to protect somebody else or treat others with kid gloves is going to be challenged. The rough road, of course, involves you getting over your natural tendency to not want to change or to fear discomfort or inconvenience. The hidden part of our consciousness is telling us that we need to be adults. Understand that there will be some bumps on the road. Until and unless you start seeing the image of your little sister dying as a positive one, you're not growing. That kid in you has to die so that the adult in you can truly be happy in the now. Again, this is not a very popular message, but these dreams represent something bigger than us. They represent something that we're not comfortable with. Still, they present a golden opportunity for us to become bigger and better and more powerful than we currently choose to be.